Hi, in this video I want to discuss um, the love attachment, love, love, um, the confusion that comes along with um, being lo in love and being attached to certain people. And obviously there's no way to avoid it once you're attached. Well, that's the way the mechanism works. It works off of our attachments and our loves and our addictions and our desires. Um, we love to love. We, we're addicted to love. We're addicted to these, these desires that we have. Desires that are so misconstrued so confusing. We think we do this, but we don't know. We don't know who we are. We don't know what we want. Um, we love to be addicted. That's the reinforcement that we have. We're afraid. Sometimes it is because we're afraid, because the game is about avoiding the negative. We're afraid to die, because if die was ple dying was pleasurable, and there's no real consequence, um, I think that'd be a choice that a lot of people would make. But obviously, that's not part of the function in and of itself. The fear of death, that fear wasn't there. And there wasn't any pain to follow. I think it'd be a choice that almost inevitably that most people would choose to take into their own hands. We love to um, fall for addiction. We're part of that. In many cases, we don't even know if what we are being addicted to. What are we addicted to? Where does the feeling can be contrived from? Obviously, we don't know. We all always we don't always know. Um, if it's just a temporary addiction, how long the addiction is going to last, um, what we're addicted to, are we just loving this, are we enjoying this, are we just afraid of something else happening, are we afraid of change, in many cases that's what it is, you get attached to something, but then you go through the fear of change, if not, then there's something else, obviously the fundamental aspect of addiction is avoiding a negative, and that's something that you can fundamentally not avoid, intrinsically it's something part of, sewn into the fabric of reality, because that's the way the fabric of reality was um, came out. It's not two pieces of that fabric is not two pieces. It's the fabric itself. It's in. It's the essence of that fabric. It was the same thing. And the the fundamental matter is synonymous with um, a negative cause and effect. All these these ideas cause and effect um, zero sum game. All these things are sewn into the fabric of the material universe based on the fact that these things material are being attributed with these philosophical ideas that are attributed to the fact that this reality is working in a certain way and it doesn't work any other way. It works only one way. Um, and that one way is zero sum, cause and effect determined, inevitable, things are going to happen a certain way and there's only so much you can do about it except be part of the cause, you're part of the necessary implements that are being used to cause the inevitable thing that's going to happen to happen. But obviously those things can just as easily not have existed. Existed. So regardless of that, um, uh, obviously we can be fooled by our desires and our addictions and our loves and sometimes a love can be lost or an addiction can be just because we're being physically addicted or we're afraid to lose something or afraid of change or something like that and a lot of those addictions are contrived from those fears of a negative to um, happening but we love to be addicted because it's a forced um, mechanism that's forced upon us not just from birth and the reinforcement of these addictions and mechanisms that are working constantly against us but it's just part of the fabric um, and the effect that we're having and it's part of that fabric as well. We're part of the fabric, but that doesn't mean it couldn't have been easily some other way. It was a possibility, but since it was just because it was a possibility doesn't mean that it was, um, and it was inevitable. Just because it was a possibility and it happened and it was inevitable doesn't mean it couldn't have happened any other way. The uh, ability could have allowed it to happen some other way. It's not just like a plain movie, even though it is to a certain extent. Is once you uh, re record something in reality and it happened a certain way, you're going to watch it the same way every time. It's going to be the same exact thing, in essence. It's just you can view it differently. Fast forward, rewind, you can skip this, you can edit, delete that, edit this. But it's going to be the same thing because it already happened. And it's working off of something that already happened. Because all these things are based on those things. If you filmed your whole life, it'd be a movie from start to end. It'd have an end and have a beginning. And it's going to have a certain thing. You could see the same part five times. It's going to be the same function, but it's that function that's being attributed to the, um, the movie. It's not a movie being attributed to reality. I guess you could say it's a movie. It could work both ways. Um, but it's working that same mechanism. You're not going to experience the same thing in life to uh, exactly the same way. Obviously, instead of its monotony of going, we're doing the same thing over and over again, but it's the same idea. Like you watch and you don't get the same sense. You don't get that same sense. You walk out of the movie theater and all of a sudden it's like, okay, I'm a sense, I'm, I sense anew. All of a sudden things can change. Things are different. It's not just the same monotony. I watched this thing five times. I'm expecting the same thing to happen. You're sitting in the same spot. A lot of those uh, reinforcements of monotony and the sense of nothing changing and getting sick of it, being too 
aware of the surroundings and realizing I'm stuck in this monotony and realizing I need some kind of external change. And that's part of the um, essence of um, realizing that um, it is a deterministic uni universe that's um, working off of the previous foundation that it was built off of. And that's exactly what we're uh, working off of, is a previous found foundation that's constantly building up. It's like a Jenga tower or whatever. You keep building the tower. Um, it doesn't fall apart. It's a tower that sticks and it's, it's set in stone once it's happened. And there's nothing you could do. And everything else, cause and effect, and all those things I mentioned before, and then in zero sum game are all in sewn into that. It's like once that the meld is that function, um, but it's all the same thing. It's a, the, the final product of the function is the tower that's being created, and that's what we're building is the tower that's continuously building up, and it's based on the previous tower. It has to be built from something else. It can't just be in thin air. But if it is, it's still being based on the foundation and function of the previous set of things. But it wouldn't happen that way. Sort of like things not happening a certain way, but you can understand them. They don't happen that way, but you can understand them that happen that way. But they don't in reality. And that's about understanding those simple functions. It's built off the previous foundation. There's something on there allowing that change to occur, or that something allowing it to float in midair. There's some kind of thing allowing that to happen, function that's existing. Um, sort of like magic. All this is just things magically appearing or changing. <sighs> magical powers coming out of your hands or your magical wand. Um, but anyway. Um, We are attached to love, addiction. That's part of the fu function of our existence. We're being fooled by it. And we're, we are loved to be addicted, but we're forced to be loved because to be addicted. And we're forced to be scared and use that force of addiction almost in a way as a reinforcer of the, the, the game that we're playing. Um, it's to keep us here. You're, you're, you're addicted, but you don't want to live. Um, um, but you're scared to die. You want to live. You don't want to. You don't want to live, but you're scared to die and you're addicted. It's almost a cruel mechanism forcing you in between a rock and a hard place. I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. I didn't think so. It's looking at it, and you're seeing exactly what it is, and you can overreact. Um, but sometimes you can only sit there and try to help someone, or you can just try to sit there. Realize, realize how hopeless the situation is. Realize yourself in their shoes and realize. I can't do anything for this person. Realize how that's happening everywhere, that you can't do anything about it. And that's really the only reason why. Um, that's one, that's the only, that's reason enough, even if it was just once, to not have this game happen. Because every positive we have is just eliminating a negative, because we're all experiencing it from the day that we're sentient. And the day that we're allowed to be sentient, that's the first thing that we can at least be reasonably expected to understand. Um, and there's only so much you can do about it. You realize that sometimes you can't do anything, and you just gotta sit there and watch. And things are just gonna happen, and you can't do anything about it. You can't help that the person that you don't know is suffering. You can't help the person that you've never met from suffering. Uh, you could try. You can do it. You obviously have an effect, sort of like you can have an effect. You can try to persuade them, but you know that you can you can't do it. You can al you can always try and do something. But well, that doesn't mean you're going to do it. And in the end, it's probably the expectation to have in, to, in certain cases um, that you can't do it. But you can persuade or you can have an effect. You can't do it right now, but you have an effect and that thing can change. Something can change. You can do something later on, it can change. But the mechanism is built off of a zero sum game as well. So the change is changing a negative into a lesser negative anyway. Um, and that change can always be expected to happen. And it's inevitable once it's already happened. And you can try. But some things are just so... Yeah, sown. So difficult. It's almost not worth taking the effort to try to say... Um, fix that problem of function. Or that issue that's happening. Sometimes it's best to... Um, not put the effort in. Because the effort later on would be more worth it than fixing something else. Or, whatever and so on and so forth. But I think you get the idea, at least I hope. But anyway, um, I don't think there's anything else to mention on this subject. Um, but we're addicted and it's a driving mechanism. And the force of the life game that we're playing that forces us to um, be forced into a 
a certain set of circumstances to allow the game to happen, forcing us to be afraid to die, forcing us to be addicted, forcing us to have those things as vices be the things that um, keeps this existence going, your existence, the existence of a um, of procreation, allowing a next generation to happen. All these things are based on the same function, and they're the things that are driving us to do these things. At least if you're being fooled by it, or you're being controlled by your addiction. What else can I say? Yeah, attachment, love, addiction, lust, love, love, addiction.